This is Unit 10, Lesson 5. We're going to be talking about factoring binomials, which are difference of squares. In this lesson, you will be able to factor binomials in the form of a squared minus b squared. So the first thing we want to talk about is the idea of it being a difference of squares. Well, a difference means a subtraction sign. If you're looking for the difference of two numbers, you're subtracting them. Squares are those perfect squares that I can take the square root of and get a nice integer number that comes out. So what it should look like is some number squared minus another number squared. When it's factored, it comes out as the first square root plus the second square root and the first square root minus the second square root. Now let's take a look at this example x squared. Well, in order to make x squared, if I took the square root of it, I would get x because x times x equals x squared. Same thing with 9. If I was to take the square root of it, I would get 3 because 3 times 3 equals 9. Well, the way I set up my parentheses is I take the first term and I put it in the front of both of my parentheses. I then take the second term and I put it in the back of both of my parentheses. The last step is just to make opposite signs. Make one of them positive and one of them negative. And there you have it is the factored form of x squared minus 9, which is x plus 3 and x minus 3. Let's take a look at an example. The first thing you need to think about, what times itself gives me x squared? Hopefully you're thinking x times x. The next thing we got to think, what times itself gives me 16? Hopefully we're thinking 4 times 4. Now, if you're ever unsure what the square root is, you could always in your calculator type square root of 16, which would also give you 4. So that's another way you can use your resources to help you out. Now, when I'm setting this up, I'm going to have two parentheses. I like to call them parentheses. Then you put the first in the front, you put the second in the back, and because it's a difference, you're going to do opposite signs, one positive, one negative, and there you have it is your final answer. Pause the video now as you try example two. Press play to go over your answer. Do your best. So we know x squared is x times x. We know 100 is 10 times 10. And then we set up our parentheses. My first term goes in front. My second term goes in back. And I give them opposite signs. There you have it. Final answer. Pause the video now as you take a look at example three. Press play to go over your answer. Now what's kind of different about this one is you actually have a coefficient in front of x squared. Well notice, I can also take the square root of 4 and I get 2. So 2 times 2 is what gives me 4. Well, x times x is what gives me x squared. And of course 25 is 5 times 5. Now I'm going to be setting up my parentheses. You must take the first term Put it into the first parentheses. Notice this time it's 2x because 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Then we have our fives that go in the back seat. And of course, our opposite signs of positive and negative. There you have it is your final answer for example three. Pause the video now to try example four. Press play to go over your answer. I believe in you. Here we go. So first thing I know is it's 3x times 3x. That's how we get 9x squared. I have 7 times 7 is how I end up with 49. I set up my parentheses. I put my first term in front. I put my second term in back. 
and I finish with opposite signs. There you have it, is my factored form of 9x squared minus 49. Now, when we're taking a look at example 5, the big difference we should notice is this x to the 4th. Well, when you're talking about x's, x to the 4th is 4 x's. So if I had to say what times itself gave me x to the 4th, I'd split it in the middle. Well, that means I have x squared times x squared. So in order to make x to the 4th, I actually have x squared times x squared. Over here, we have 6 times 6. Set up your parentheses. Put your first term in the front. Your second term in the back. And finish with opposite sides. This is the factored form of x to the 4th minus 36. Pause the video now to take a look at example 6. Press play to go over your answer. Be awesome. I believe in you. Here we go. So I know this is x squared times x squared. I know this is 11 times 11. I'm going to set up my parentheses. First term goes in front. Second term goes in back. Finish with opposite signs. There we have it. Final answer. Pause the video now as we try example 7. Press play to go over your answer. You can do it. This is close, close, close to the end. Finish strong. Here we go. So I know this is 8 times 8 for 64. And then it's x times x for x squared. And 1 might be a little bit more complicated, but remember, the square root of 1 is just 1. So I'm going to have 1 times 1. Set up my parentheses. First term goes in front. Second term goes in back. And then I finish up with opposite sides. The last thing I want to talk to you about before you go is look at this here. If I have x squared minus 9 versus if I had x squared plus 9, this one right here is a difference. This one right here is a sum. So we can only factor these binomials when there's a difference. I can end up with x plus 3 and x minus 3. Well, notice when I multiply them, I get x squared minus 3x. I get positive 3x minus 3. When you combine the middle terms, you notice they have opposite signs. So they're going to cancel, which is why you're left with x squared. Ooh, I forgot to multiply those. My bad. 3 times 3 is going to make that 9. And that's the reason why you're left with x squared minus 9. Over here, I can't factor because there's no way to create a positive 9 and have opposite signs that cancel. So this is not factorable. So if you see the plus sign and it's a binomial, you can't factor it. Just keep that in mind.